uh, we have a target function or objective function to minimize. So let's call this U. So obviously we can run a lot of, there are many different stochastic optimization algorithms on the shelf for us to use. Um, but we are interested in module one diffusion in simulate and new so in particular, uh, the very first algorithm is based on this uh, overdam laundry fund diffusion. So this is uh, the stochastic differential equation describing this overdam laundry fund diffusion. So in the drift term, we have negative of the gradient of u. And in the diffusion term, we have the square root of 2 times epsilon t times dBt. So bt is uh, the d-dimensional standard Brownian motion. And epsilon t is the temperature or the cooling schedule. So this depends on time t, so it's time dependent. Um, so we can prove that the instantaneous stationary distribution is the Gibbs distribution. So that means at time t, the stationary distribution of this overdam laundry fund diffusion is, has the following form. So this e with exponent negative u divided by epsilon t. So 1 over epsilon t is what people call the inverse temperature. And so I have this strange, seemingly strange notation for Gibbs distribution, mu sub epsilon t with an upper script of zero. So this upper script of zero, I'll explain that later. So, but for now, just take it for granted. So let's just take this notation as my notation for the classical Gibbs distribution. And of course, in the fixed temperature case, so that means that we don't have a time dependency on the temperature. So that means, let's say, epsilon t equal to 0 0.5 or something like we have a fixed temperature. So um, of course, in the context of sampling, uh, I guess uh, the overdown larger form diffusion is widely used in many tasks in sampling, like an adjusted larger form algorithm or metropolis adjust um, larger form algorithms. So this is the overdown larger form diffusion, but uh, I'm using it for global optimization. So it turns out that the convergence of simulated annealing depends on a constant E star that is called the critical height or the, or the hill climbing constant. So I will have this mathematical definition of E star here. So it looks a bit horrible, but this is uh, the mathematical definition of this critical height that I call E star. I denote it by E star. But let us try to understand it from an intuitive viewpoint. So let's try to look at it from an intuitive viewpoint. So we can intuitively understand E star as the largest hill one need to climb, starting from a local minimum to a fixed global minimum. So let me, on the next slide, I'm going to draw a graph. So this slide. So this slide, we try to understand what is this critical height. So this quite critical height will play a really important role in the convergence of over dam launcher form for simulate annealing. So here on uh, this black curve here is a very simple uh, non-convex objective function ux. So this is the uh, local minimum. So let's say we start from this local minimum. We want to go which the global minimum, which is here. Then we have to climb over this hill. So if we start from this local minimum, we need to climb over this hill to which to the global minimum of this objective function or this target function. So the height that you need to climb is actually E star. So that's why some people would call this um, the optimal hill climbing constant. So this in my notation here is this E star. So, um, but this is on the previous slide, I have this. Um, mathematical definition here. So this is just to give a sense of what is this E star, because this E star is going to play a role in this convergence result here. So obviously we are interested in convergence of simulated annealing. So th there are many results in, th in this direction. So I just want to mention a few classical results here. So let's say if we adopt what people call the logarithmic cooling schedule, so that means that, so again, epsilon t is my notation for the temperature at time t. So the temperature at time t decays like E over log t for large enough t. 
So that's why people call this logarithmic cooling schedule because it's decaying like E over log T. So this E is what I call the energy level, and we have to pick this energy level greater than a critical height. So this E is, has to be bigger than E star. So E star is what we just learned in the last slide, in the previous slide. So this is the critical height. So for E bigger than E star and under this logarithmic cooling schedule, we can guarantee a global, a global convergence in the sense that um, for any positive delta, we will have U to be concentrated around um, the global minimum value of U, so infimum of U. Um, as t goes to infinity. So this is an asymptotic result. So because we are taking t goes to infinity, but um, there are actually some um, more results concerning finite time, non-asymptotic bounds for this kind of large deviation probability. So, but I will just mention a few um, classical results. There's a, there's a more asymptotic in nature. So this is by Chung et al. by Holy Richard Holy and also uh, Daniel Rook, and also, of course, by Laurent Miklo. So there's um, a few classical results in this direction. So, so far, so good. So far, this is um, the classical simulate annealing based on overdam launcher form diffusion. And I discussed some of its classical convergence results. So next, uh, I'm going to talk about this kinetic simulate annealing. So what is this kinetic simulate annealing? So uh, we just learned that in simulate annealing, so we can use overdam laundry form diffusion, which is reversible with respect to the Gibbs distribution at h time t. So we have, uh, so we can show that this overdam laundry form diffusion is reversible with respect to the Gibbs distribution at h time t. And how? So we also have the underdamped or kinetic laundry form diffusion. So the underdamped or kinetic laundry form diffusion is used in the kinetic simulate annealing, so KSA, kinetic simulate annealing, that incorporate. So this kinetic laundry form diffusion, uh, based on the name, it will um, incorporate the velocity or momentum variable. So we will have, um, in addition to the position variable, we will have um, velocity or momentum in this kinetic laundry form diffusion, and we will use it for simulate annealing. So this under down laundry form is in general non-reversible, and I guess some of us will know that using non-reversible heuristic can hopefully improve or accelerate the convergence. Um, I guess there's a long line of literature in this direction. I'll just mention a few. So non using non-reversible dynamics, have been, uh, we can uh, hopefully accelerate or improve the convergence in the context of sampling or optimization. So there's a long line of literature just to name a few. So the idea of using uh, kinetic or underdam larger form diffusion is just to incorporate the velocity or momentum variable. So let us look at this mathematical dynamics. So this on this slide, I write down the SDE of underdam laundry form. So we have this SDE of underdam laundry form here, xt, yt. So xt is my notation for position. Yt is my notation for velocity or momentum variable. So we have this SDE for underdam laundry form. And so we can see, so let's look at the first equation, this dxt equal to yt dt, just the, the differential of the position is just the velocity times the time differential, which makes sense. So, and the second equation is the velocity update or the momentum update. So we can see that the objective function or the target function is here, so gradient of u, and then we add some Brownian noise. So again, bt is my notation for the standard d-dimensional Brownian motion. So this is the SDE of underdam laundry form. Again, studied by uh, many people, and we can show that uh, the instantaneous stationary distribution at time t is a product distribution. So, in the x coordinate, in the x coordinate is the Gibbs distribution. So a few slides ago, I introduced my 
notation of Gibbs distribution, which is this mu sub epsilon t with an upper script of zero. So it is a product distribution of this Gibbs distribution in the x coordinate and in the velocity coordinate or in the y coordinate here, we have a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and variance epsilon t. So this, so you can see that this takes on this product form. So this is um, in the x coordinate, we have this Gibbs distribution. In the y coordinate, we have this, or in the velocity coordinate, we have this Gaussian distribution. And my notation for that is pi sub epsilon t. Again, we have put an upper script of zero here. So I will explain that later. But for now, again, just take this notation for granted. And this pi here is the stationary, instantaneous stationary distribution of this undamped modular form. Again, we have this, um, because we are having this uh, cooling schedule or temperature schedule, so this is in fact a time in homogeneous or non-homogeneous diffusion. So that's why we have to talk about instantaneous stationary distribution. But of course, if we fix the temperature, um, we have the stationary distribution. Okay, so let us look into convergence of uh, KSA, kinetic simulated annealing. So just like I mentioned earlier, that it is non-reversible and being non-reversible just imposes some technical difficulties in analyzing the convergence of KSA. Um, because a lot of classical tools uh, does not really work in the non-reversible setting. So uh, in a very recent work uh, by Pierre Momach, um, he essentially proved the following results. It is the first result about kinetic, the convergence of kinetic simulated annealing. So we have the following cooling schedule. Again, is oh, the same as what we have saw earlier, like uh, with this E over log T. And again, we pick the E, the energy level, to be bigger than a critical height, so E star. Then for any positive delta, we have an asymptotic convergence. So again, we have the U of XT. So this is um, the value of the U uh, according to the kinetic dynamics. It's going to concentrate around the global minimum of U asymptotically. Again, we will have some, I mean, in the paper by Pierre Momach, uh, he also have some finite time non-asymptotic bounds. So again, we can have some finite time bounds. So for fixed time t, we can have some upper bound here on this probability. But again, just uh, to save me some time, I would just list down this um, asymptotic result here. So we have this convergence of KSA, which is, so at least it gives us some guarantee, like this KSA really um, converges in some sense. So, so far, this is some really classical algorithms or launcher fund diffusions used in simulated annealing. So first, uh, we discussed the over dam launcher fund diffusion. Now we just discussed under dam or kinetic launcher fund diffusion. Now I'm going to talk about some accelerated version or some accelerated launcher fund diffusion used in simulated annealing. So many techniques has been developed in the literature to accelerate the convergence of launcher fund diffusion. So let's say preconditioning, the use of heavy tail noise or Lafay noise instead of Gaussian noise. We can lift it up to higher order launcher fund dynamics, which is called the generalized launcher fund dynamics. Or we can um, perturb the drift in a really special way and in an anti-symmetric manner. So this, this is again just uh, uh, just the many techniques developed in the literature to accelerate the convergence. But in my talk today, I'm not going to go into this technique. So I'm actually going to focus on a variant of overdam launcher fund diffusion with state dependent diffusion coefficient, which is introduced by Fang et al. in SPA in 1997. So this a variant seems to me is a bit overlooked by the literature, but I think it's quite an interesting variant, so let's see. So what is this improved over dam launcher form diffusion about? So 
let's look at its dynamics mathematically. So this is the SDE. Um, again, the drift term is the same, so negative of the gradient of U, so negative of the gradient of the target function or the objective function. So what is really different is this term that I highlight in blue. So we can see that the diffusion coefficient is state dependent, so it depends on EZT. So we have this extra term here. So in the classical Overdam larger form, this diffusion coefficient is the square root of two times epsilon t. But in this improved, so-called improved version, we have this extra term here. So let me write that down. So we have two parameters are introduced in this variant. So we have this, obviously we have this c, and we also have another parameter that I call f. So these two parameters has to be chosen in a special way. So let's say for the parameter C, it has to be chosen such that uh, C is bigger than the global minimum value of U. So for the parameter F, it's actually a function and it has to satisfy certain regularity conditions in order for the proof to work. So let's say it has to be twice differentiable, no negative, bounded, non-decreasing and satisfying these conditions. So we have, so this, this is this extra term here. So let's see what is this term about. So, so we are actually having this F evaluated at the positive part. So this is my notation for the positive part. So the positive part of U of EZT minus C, and we evaluate at F. So I will explain that in the next slide, but just bear with me for now. So it turns out that, um, even in this setting, we can still write down a stationary distribution. So it takes on this seemingly complicated form, and I will denote this stationary distribution by mu sub epsilon t, and the upper script now is f. So uh, in some sense, this is uh, generalized, uh, generalized. It can be understand. It can be understood as a generalization of the Gibbs distribution, because let's say if we take f equal to zero. Um, this term that I highlight in blue just becomes square root of two times epsilon t, which in which everything just reduces to the classical case. So if we take f equal to zero, this dynamic is exactly the classical over them larger form dynamics. And this stationary instantaneous stationary distribution just becomes the classical Gibbs distribution. So with f equal to zero, everything becomes a classical case. So uh, let me illustrate this idea by the following graph in the next slide. So I have this graph here trying to illustrate this idea of this improved longer form diffusion. So again, the black curve is my objective function or the target function. And let's say I choose the level C here. So C is this blue dashed line here. So above this level C, uh, we will inject more noise than the classical launcher for dynamics. So if you, um, if we are above this, so if you go back to the math, uh, if we are above this C, then U of EZT minus C, we evaluate that at F, and we add that to epsilon T. So that means that we have some extra noise in this region. So if we are, if we are above this level C, we inject more noise. And hopefully, this extra noise can improve the convergence. Well, this the hope. So hopefully, this can uh, this change can improve the convergence because let's say if we are stuck in some local minimum, let's say here or here or here. Uh, well, we want more noise, right? In so as to help us to escape this local minimum because there's no gradient information. The gradient is zero. So on the other hand, when we are below C, so that means we're in this region. So we have the same noise as SA. So the same noise as the classical uh, over them longer form diffusion. So because if we go back to this equation here, if we are below C, then this positive part is just zero. So we have F of zero here and F of zero by this condition is just zero. So we have the same noise in this region. So in this region, if we are below C, we have the same noise. On the other hand, if we are above C, that means we're in this region, we inject more noise. So this is the idea, quite a simple idea. 
and this is the map and we have some stationary distribution here. OK, well, you may have this question. So, well, the idea of using state dependent noise makes sense intuitively and hopefully it can improve the convergence. Um, however, is there any theoretical convergence guarantee that really prove this improved Longerform dynamics converge faster in any sense? I mean, this is the idea, but can you really prove it that it in any sense is converge faster? Well, the answer is yes. So uh, in that paper by Feng et al. in SPA, uh, they proved the convergence of this um, improved launch, improved simulated annealing. So I denote it by ISA, which is based on this improved launcher phone dynamics over them case. So again, we have this logarithmic cooling. So it's the same as before. And but this time, the only thing that changed is this C star. So now we have C star here. Before that, for uh, the kinetic simulated annealing or the classical simulated annealing, we just have E star, the critical height. So, but now we have the C star. So what is the C star? But And all other results are almost the same, but then we just replace this E star by this C star. So um, the key ingredient in the proof, so I will not talk about um, the proof is actually pretty classical as follows. Um, the Daniels Trook kind of proof in simulated annealing. So we use the spectral gap and some log solvable um, constant, uh, and we have to show that they are both of this order uh, when the temperature goes to zero. So they are of this exponential order, C star of epsilon t. So again, this kind of ordering um, also frequently appears in the metastability literature. So what is this C star? So this is what we call the clipped critical height. So that's why I call this, put a C here, so C for clipped. So it's the clipped critical height. So let us first record the critical height E star. So this is the mathematical definition. The clipped critical height is this that I uh, use highlight in blue. So we, we can just compare these two definition. So if we compare these two definition, we will see that we are just inserting this minimum operator and we are taking the minimum of u with c. So we take the minimum of u with c and c here, minimum of u and c here, and minimum of u and c here. And so if we just compare line by line with this, u, this line and this line, the only difference seems to me that we have this minimum of c here. And so one way to understand c star is that we are just pretending we are minimizing with so instead of u, we are minimizing u minimum of c. So this is one possible way to understand understand this clipped critical height. And even better, even nicer, we can uh, prove the following two statements. So we have c star less than or equal to e star, and we can also prove that c star is bound above by C minus the global minimum of U. So this is the clip to critical height, and this will play a role because, and this is in a sense an, an improved version because we can use a uh, faster cooling schedule because uh, we have from here, uh, E star is bigger than or equal to C star. So in this improved simulated annealing, we can use a uh, faster cooling schedule that decays to zero faster. I mean, just, uh, I mean, asymptotically it's the same rate because it's one over log t, but then we have this constant, we can uh, play around with this constant E. So in this sense is faster and is also reflected in this spectral gap and the log sobble of constant order. Okay, so this is the improved simulated annealing, so nothing new so far. So what is really new is uh, this improved kinetic simulate and annealing that I try to develop. So the idea is very simple. So let's see. So the idea is just to cast. So so up to now, we introduced three algorithms. The over dam longer form diffusion. The second one is the under dam longer form diffusion. 
and we just discussed about this improved over damp laundry form diffusion. So a very natural idea is to cast the idea of this improved over damp laundry form diffusion. That means the idea of state dependent noise into kinetic simulate and newly. OK, sounds easy to me for now, so let's try. So uh, my, this is my first attempt, so let's try to add state dependent noise to the position. OK, so this is the dynamics. So we can see that we just add this term. So this is um, we just add this term to the position update. And this is what I highlight in blue. Um, so we have uh, this update. This this is the position update and YT is again the velocity or the momentum update. And we add the state dependent noise to the position because of this idea of state dependent noise. OK, and so a few things to observe is that um, this SDE is no longer what people call degenerate in the sense that uh, we have a granular noise is added to both the position and momentum of the update. Because in the classical kinetic longiform diffusion, we do not have any Brownian noise. So there's no diffusion term in the position update. But now, if we add this term here, this, there's also Brownian noise in here. And so this is no longer degenerate in this sense. And we can actually show that um, the resulting instantaneous stationary distribution in X in the position coordinate does not correspond to mu uh, sub epsilon TF. So this is the what I call the generalized Gibbs distribution because we want the X coordinate to have an instantaneous stationary distribution um, that is the generalized Gibbs. So, but then we can actually prove that this in this dynamics is actually not really what we want. So this seems adding state dependent noise to the position uh, it's not really the right direction in this sense uh, because we want the stationary distribution in X um, to correspond to this generalized Gibbs. OK, this is my first attempt, so I try to add some state dependent noise to the position, which I do it here. So it doesn't seem does not seem to work in the right direction so far. So let's try another attempt. It's attempt number two. I add the state dependent noise to the momentum. So what do I mean by that? So now I will try to add some state dependent noise here in this mom, uh, momentum update. So this yt. So the yt is again yt is my notation for velocity or momentum at time t. So I try to add some state dependent diffusion coefficient here. I highlight in blue. And for the position coordinate, I, I doesn't I do not touch it, so I just leave it as the same as the kinetic laundry form dynamics. So dxt is just velocity times dt. So so we have this extra extra term here again. So let's see how it works. And again, it's not really what we want because this change will only change the stationary, the instantaneous stationary distribution in y, but not in x. So we can actually prove that this. Uh, the resulting uh, uh, stationary distribution of this dynamic it will just change the stationary distribution in the y coordinate. That means in the velocity, but not in x. But what we really care is x, right? Is the position, or you know, we want to um, uh, find a global minimizer. So um, we don't really care about velocity or momentum in that sense. So again, it seems adding state dependent noise to momentum seems to me not that right at that uh, up to now. So it seems adding state dependent noise to momentum seems not to be so right. OK, so let's try another attempt to have this idea of state dependent noise. So this is I think is a very uh, nice idea. So this is to change the target function or to change the objective function from. So originally our objective function is u, I try to change it to another function that I call epsilon h epsilon. So I will introduce this in the next slide. So let's recall this generalized Gibbs distribution. Again, this is kind of complicated. 
I guess most of us do not really want to read it. But then let's tr me try to write it in a more user friendly or reader friendly form. So let's define H. So this H depends on the temperature, so epsilon T. So I define this H. So I define this H so that we can write this generalized Gibbs distribution in this exponential form. So E with exponent negative H of epsilon T. So I, again, I highlight this in red. Okay. okay, so this seems nicer because I write it in some kind of Gibbs distribution. And I guess uh, most of us are more familiar in this form. Okay, so let's, let's compare this stationary distribution with the classical Gibbs distribution in simulate annealing or in over dam larger form diffusion. So in the classical case, we have this mu sub epsilon t. Again, I have this strange notation because when f is equal to zero, everything uh, reduces to the classical Gibbs. We just compare this to a line. So the only thing that changed seems to be in the exponent. So in the exponent of this generalized Gibbs, we have this h of sub epsilon t. And in the exponent of this classical Gibbs distribution, I have this term highlighted in blue. So 1 over epsilon t is, again, the inverse temperature at time t times u of x, the objective function or the target function or the potential function. So we can, one way to understand this is as with the optimization landscape is modified from this 1 over epsilon t of u to h of epsilon t. So let me illustrate this with, um, so this in this way, this idea of state dependent noise is embedded in the optimization landscape. So we will see in a second. So let me illustrate this with this plot. So let's say we have this target function or objective function, uh, u sub zero. This is in this black curve. So this black curve here, so you can also read from my legend here. So this black curve is u sub zero. This is, let's say, my objective function or target function. And let's say I take the following parameter, epsilon equals 0 0.5, c equal to negative 1.5, f equal to arctangent. I can then generate this red and dashed line here. So this is actually h sub epsilon x. So you can see that that's why I call this idea of um, landscape modification. So we are in some sense modifying the landscape in a hopefully in a better way so that we can run our algorithm on it. So this so what is this H of epsilon again is on the previous slide. So this is this seemingly horrible, seemingly difficult expression. So again, this is very hard to evaluate H of epsilon because it has this nasty integral here. But uh, in this simple case, we can evaluate it using some uh, numerical integration package on MATLAB. So I generate this plot in MATLAB. So we have this from u sub zero. So this is our original target function. And then we somehow change it to this h of epsilon, h, h, sorry, h sub epsilon, so which is this red or this orange line here. So the idea is that this landscape modification. Well, you can see this landscape is in some sense better, right? I mean, uh, so you can see it's less. Uh, I mean, you can actually prove they have the same set of stationary points. I'll mention that later. And uh, if you run any optimization algorithm or kinetic simulate annealing on this modified landscape, it seems to me that it is easier, intuitively at least. So this is the idea of landscape modification, but in the wild. So this is uh, the image is taken from this. So we want to modify the landscape in a better way, hopefully. I mean, hopefully. So this is landscape modification. And um, so the idea is very simple. Just replace this target function or objective function u by this epsilon t, h of epsilon t. And we call the resulting dynamics Improved Kinetic Simulate Annealing, IKSA. Again, I, I didn't do anything fancy. I just changed the target function. 
but just like what I said earlier, this change will embed the idea of state dependent noise. So we will have this, uh, what I call the IKSA, improved kinetic laundry form, uh, or improved kinetic simulate annealing, sorry. So again, what I only change is this term that I highlight in red. So I only have, so in the classical kinetic, I have gradient of U, but here we have epsilon T, gradient of H of epsilon T. So this and we mark here, so this method can be understood as a state dependent preconditioning of the gradient because um, just like I mentioned a few slides earlier, it's very difficult to evaluate or to compute H of epsilon T, but we are very lucky. Uh, luckily, computing as gradient is still possible because we can compute a gradient of H, which is just this, this expression here, multiplied by the gradient of U. So we are actually multiplying a state dependent preconditioning factor in front of the gradient of U in this update. And from this equation, we can also prove that uh, H of epsilon and U, they share the same set of stationary points. So that's why um, if you go back to this curve here, you can actually show that they have the same set of stationary points. So, um, so this is the state. So this is the idea, very simple. Uh, and we have, we can also prove something. So uh, we have this, we can show the instantaneous stationary distribution is actually what we want. So it is again a product distribution. In the X coordinate, it is this generalized Gibbs. Again, I have this strange notation, mu sub epsilon t, I put an upper script of f. And in the Y coordinate, we have a Gaussian distribution with mean zero variance epsilon t. So this is this. And if I further write it out, it's just E with exponent negative H of epsilon t. So we can actually prove uh, the instantaneous stationary distribution of this improved kinetic laundry form as this has this uh, stationary distribution. Again, everything reduces to the classical case with f is zero. So if f is zero, then the gradient of u is just epsilon t gradient of h of epsilon t, which reduces to the classical case. So everything reduces to the classical case when f is zero. So the more interesting case is when f does not equal to zero and satisfy the conditions. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss this convergence of this improved kinetic simulated annealing. So again, you may have this question. So this idea of running kinetic simulated annealing, or in fact, any other stochastic optimization algorithms on a modified landscape makes sense intuitively, but is there any Theoretical results that prove this improved dynamics really converge faster. So the answer is yes. So again, we have this um, convergence results of improved kinetic simulate annealing. So we have a log logarithmic cooling. So again, everything is like the same that we saw earlier. But this time, if we compare KSA, the kinetic simulate annealing with this IKSA, the improved kinetic simulate annealing, the only thing that changed is again the C star. So we have this C star here, again, the clip to critical height. And again, we will have some asymptotic convergence results. So, but then again, we will have some non asymptotic or finite time results for fixed time T. We can have some large deviation bounds on this uh, kind of probability in the paper, but this is just to illustrate that we have this uh, results. We essentially have the same results, except that we replace E star by C star. And in this sense is converge faster because we can actually prove the spectral gap and also uh, the log sobble of constant, they are smaller. So we will have this uh, proof so I will not go through the proof, but then again is relying on the framework by PMO March in PTRF 2018. And this framework all further builds on the hypercohesivity framework by Cedric Vinali. So we have this IKSA. So this some nice, hopefully a nice idea and some results about this convergence. 
And now I introduce a further modification of this IKSA that I call AXA. So Improved Adaptive Kinetic Simulator Annealing, IAKSA. So I'm trying to insert some adaptive component in this um, kinetic simulated annealing method. So the convergence of IKSA depends on the parameter C, which is, uh, again, we have to pick the parameter C bigger than the global minimum value of U. And ideally, we want to pick C to be close to the global minimum, but it can be really hard to achieve in practice. So to tune this parameter C, we would use the uh, one way to tune this. So that there are actually many other ways, but so let's say one way to tune this parameter C is to use the running minimum generated by the laundry form diffusion or by the algorithm on the fly. So that means that we are now setting this C in a time dependent manner. And we are using this. So this is the running minimum by the algorithm or by the laundry form diffusion. So the, minimum up to time t of u of x of u, and we're taking u from 0 to t. So now this parameter c is time dependent. So now it will also imply, if you recall my definition of the clip to critical height, it depends on c. So now this clip to critical height is also time dependent. If we have time dependent c, so and we have to pick the energy level e to be bigger than c stars, bracket, uh, sorry, comma t. So the picture we have in mind is that uh, as the algorithm progresses. So the picture we have in mind is that we are actually adaptively uh, changing the landscape, hopefully in a better way as the algorithm progresses, because we are tuning the C and using the running minimum, and this running minimum will be reflected uh, in the modified landscape because we have this H and H depends on C as well. So the resulting diffusion is non-Markovian because it depends on its past trajectories and which depends on this running minimum C of T, and it belongs to this class of self-interacting diffusions so this is um, so there's actually a long line of work on self-interacting diffusion, and the further origin from it comes from the random walk with reinforcement, which um, is originated from Percy Diakonis. So anyway, so this resulting diffusion is non-Markovian, and it belongs to this broader class of what we call the self-interacting diffusion. So we have this AXA, so improved adaptive kinetic simulated annealing. So we tune this parameter C using the running minimum. So it's again a nice idea, and we will be able to prove this results more rigorously. So this is again the dynamics. So this is the kinetic dynamics. In the X or in the position coordinate, everything is the same. In the velocity or in the momentum coordinate, we will have this so the only thing that changes this, we are having on this, we're using this modified landscape, but now we are having this, we also have this dependency on CT because this CT is, we are using the running minimum up to time T generated by the algorithm. And we can prove that again under uh, the log logarithmic cooling schedule of this form, and we pick the energy level E to be bigger than C star bracket, sorry, comma T. Then we have this asymptotic convergence results. But again, in the paper, you will have finite time, non asymptotic bounds for this kind of large deviation probability, but just to illustrate uh, to be consistent with other methods. OK, so we have this AXA. So let's check its numerical performance. So that's all about the theory for today. So let's check out this numerical performance on some global optimization benchmark functions. So the first function that we are going to test on is this raw stringent function. I compare only laundry form diffusion. So I don't compare with other global optimization algorithms. Of course, there are many others. And I just compare with 
uh, uh, longer form diffusion algorithm. And then we will have, um, so we have this following four algorithms. Um, this, the first one is AXA, I improve adaptive kinetic simulate annealing. The second one is IASA, so which is the overdamped, improved overdamped laundry font, but we choose the same F and same CT in AXA. And the last two are the classical algorithms, the KSA, which is the under that, which is just under dam kinetic or the kinetic laundry font diffusion for simulated annealing. SA is just the over dam laundry font diffusion for simulated annealing. So we just compare these four algorithms on some benchmark functions. And we use the Euler Mariama discretization. And again, we use arctangent. So you can see that uh, we always use arctangent because it's suggested in the first paper by this uh, uh, in this paper by Feng et al in SPA. And for further details, if you're interested in the numerical experiments, um, you can check out the paper for further details. So um, we are going to plot some graph to illustrate this. So what we are going to plot is this. So we are going to plot some probability graph. So this is on a vertical axis. I this probability and we are taking it on a log scale. So log in a base of 10 of this probability. So these two are the probability of running minimum. And the modern minimum is greater than the global minimum plus some delta. And we plot this against the time and also in a log scale. So everything is in a log scale, both in the horizontal and the vertical axis. So everything is in a log scale. And so this is the first graph is that you're going to see in the next slide is about the global minimum. Oh, sorry, about the running minimum up to time t. The second graph that you're going to see in the next slides is this uh, time t, so u of xt just at this time t, and or u of vz t. Um, and we're going to plot this against log t, so everything again is in the log, log scale. And to compute this probability, we just do a very simple Monte Carlos method. So we just run 100 independent replicas and we count the proportion of replicas for which uh, this event happened. So that means we run for each method, we run 100 independent replicas of it and then we count how many uh, of them uh, satisfied these two events. And also we inject the same sequence of Gaussian noise. So we inject the same noise in um, for failure comparison. So that means uh, we have these four methods uh, uh, in each replicas we are injecting the same kind of noise. So let's check out this uh, Rosengen function. So this is the landscape. Again, the image source is taken directly from Wikipedia, and this is uh, the function form. So uh, let's check out the graph. So just like what I said earlier, so this is going, everything is going to be on a log scale. So on the horizontal axis, we have log in the base of 10 of the time. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And in the vertical axis, we have to log in the base of 10 of some probabilities. Again, this is some running minimum. So big, uh, so you can see that, so we have, again, we have four methods, AXA, KSA, IASA, SA. So the blue line here corresponds to AXA, the improved adaptive kinetic simulate annealing. So you can see that it um, converge around the running minimum converges to the global minimum of the, of the objective function U uh, pretty fast. If you compare that to other methods, let's say if you compare with KSA, the kinetic simulate annealing, or if you compare this with IASA, improved adaptive simulate annealing, Overview and for SA, that means the classical over dam laundry font diffusion. You can see um, the running minimum does not seem to converge, it's stuck at zero. I mean, of course, this kind of graph depends on a lot of factors like the step size, the initialization, uh, the temperature schedule, and so on and so on. So, if you're interested in uh, this parameters that we use in generating this plot, feel free to check out the paper because I write that down in the paper. So um, uh, yeah, so because 
but well, at least on this instance, it seems to me that AXA seems to converge, have an improved convergence than other methods, which we just based on this graph. So this is the first plot. The second plot is, again, we have almost the same thing. Again, the horizontal axis is locked in the base of 10 of the time t. In the vertical axis, we have the lock in the base of 10, but we have some um, kind of large deviation probability here. Uh, we have this up to time t is no longer the running minimum generated by the algorithm, but just at a particular time t uh, is bigger than the global minimum of u plus delta. Or we have, um, this is the overdam case, I use z for the overdam and x for the underdam kinetic case. And again, if you just based on this plot, it seems to me that AXA again seems to converge better. I mean, our, all other three methods, they do not show any sign of convergence near uh, the neighborhood of the global minimum. Uh, so, well, but again, you can argue that because the parameters, step size, temperature schedule, and so there are a lot of factors that affect this kind of graph, but at least based on this instance, we can uh, have this improved, seems to be improved convergence of this method that I call AXA, so improved adaptive kinetic simulator annealing. So this is the first test function. So the te second test function is this Ackley function. So again, this is the landscape. I, the image is this landscape of this Ackley function. I took it from this website. And this is uh, the mathematical form of this function. So again, this is also a two-dimensional function. The last function is also a two-dimensional function. So I put this, uh, so this is uh, some a movie, just try to illustrate a sample path of this different methods. So let's see whether I can share it here. So let's see, um, I'm going to share it uh, on my computer here. So again, I, I sorry for that because I, I did, I run, I generate this movie or this video uh, a bit earlier. So I didn't change the legend and I don't have time to change my legend now. So this, so we will compare um, the methods that I introduced earlier. So this is, uh, again, Choi is this AXA, Feng Tao is this IASA. Longophone, classical longophone just means SA, the over them longophone. HMC just means KSA, so kinetic simulated annealing. That means the classical kinetic case. Momentum is the uh, optimization method, momentum, uh, but without any Brownian noise. So that means it's just momentum method without the classical momentum method in optimization without any noise. So so I'm running it, so I don't know whether you can see it, but then you can see that initially, uh, so all four methods, they start with the same initialization, same sequence of Gaussian noise, so same step size, so everything is the same. And so initially, uh, this methods just explore around uh, the initialization point, so they're exploring. And so that's not that interesting so far, so I just pause it. And then you can see that, uh, so let me skip ahead of time. So now, so let me play it. So now it's like the methods they are like explore, still exploring the, some nearby regions in or according to the target function. So this target function is the Ackley function and this background is um, the contour lines of the Ackley function. And this zero, zero, the origin, this red star is the global minimum. still not that interesting because the, all the methods are still on this instance it is still exploring uh, the, uh, some nearby regions and again I will just 
stop it and we skip ahead of time. And so now if I play it, so you can see that this, so you can see that uh, we have this two methods. So this is a blue line. So this is this AXA. This orange line here is this uh, IASA, the, the one proposed by Feng and Chao. So this improved over them and adaptive over them larger point diffusion. And we will have, so this is still running, but this, what well, this two hour or this two methods seems to be outperforming other methods because at least this orange line and this blue line here, at least up to now, seems to be heading uh, a better direction than all other methods. You can see all other methods. You can see the red line now or, or the other lines or this green line here, they're just still wandering around, not giving any interesting direction. So, uh, so again, skip ahead of time and you will see gradually um, this blue line here and we'll try to enter the basin of attraction of the global minimum. So, uh, and you can see the orange line is still like outside this basin and this red line is also still rendering around outside. But um, this blue line here, this AXA, is trying to reach the global minimum. Uh, so again, I'll skip ahead of time a bit. And you see is this blue line starts to wander around the global minimum. And this orange and this red line, they're still outside of this basin. So, so yeah, this is just to give us a perspective on this method and how this method really works. And again, the perspective is that this blue line is actually running on a modified landscape. So it is actually not really running on this Ackley function, but running on a modified Ackley function landscape. So in this way, it can hopefully um, improve the convergence. So let me share back my slides. Um, it's here. So again, I put it on this line, on this website. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. So that's pretty much about it for the numerical and theoretical part of this AXA. So this there seems to be very limited literature of state dependent noise in stochastic optimization. Uh, at least as far as I'm aware of, I'm only aware of this free work. Maybe there are more, but this is just really um, what I'm aware of at this moment. So of course this work by Feng et al, in which my work is based upon, and also this work by Andrew Stewart and Jonathan Mattingly on MPRF 2002, and also very recently by Sing Guo and Wei Ping Tang, they have UC Berkeley and Columbia University. Uh, they have a lot of preprint earlier this year, 2000, uh, I think in May, about using some occupation, occupation time in uh, stochastic optimization, which I think is quite interesting. So this work hopes to promote this idea of state dependent noise. I mean, let's try to understand how it really works when we use state dependent noise in let's say in sampling or also in optimization. So this is my first thought. And the second remark that I have is this on this landscape modification. And I think this has some sort of analog of um, as important sampling, but in the context of optimization. So I think this perspective of landscape modification is quite interesting and at least quite refreshing for me. I mean, I don't know others, but that is refreshing for me. But uh, so from a stochastic perspective, uh, we can use uh, the use of state dependent noise can be understood as a variance reduction technique. So we use state dependent noise in some sense we are, is some sort of variance reduction. And, but then we have this perspective from an optimization point of view. Uh, it is in some sense equivalent to changing the target function from U. So this is our original, original target function or original objective function U. We change it from U to
platform on this modified landscape. So this is in some sense kind of like this change of target function is in some sense kind of like important sampling. Because in important sampling, we try to sample from a different distribution, hopefully for better sampling. I mean, better in some sense. And in this landscape modification, we just optimize with respect to a different target function or a different objective function, hopefully for a better landscape. I mean, again, it's in some sense better. And so this has some few in, uh, questions that I've been thinking about, like because uh, there's so many re variance reduction techniques for longer font diffusion. Um, so can because this you can imagine this use of state dependent noise is just a very specific variance reduction technique, right? And this has a different Gibbs distribution. I call this generalized Gibbs. So how about other variance reduction techniques? So can this give new or some different landscape modification. And this interplay of between sampling and optimization always goes two ways, right? So conversely, can we have um, landscape modification? So because you can imagine landscape modification in this case, is just some state dependent preconditioning. So and in optimization, there are many other preconditioning tricks or any also some other tricks in optimization. Can they give some new insights to um, variance reduction? So, so this is my thoughts and some remarks a bit. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much about it for my talk today. Thank you for your time. And yeah, I hope everyone have enjoyed. Thank you very much.